एवरीवन वेलकम टू जेम केम नाउ टुडेज वीडियो इज ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन आवर केमिस्ट्री सिलेबस दैट इज द प्रैक्टिकल पार्ट नाउ इन द फर्स्ट प्रैक्टिकल्स वी विल डील विद द इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री पार्ट एंड दिस वीडियो डील्स विद ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री प्रैक्टिकल डीलिंग विद इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग इफ यू आर न्यू टू जेम केम डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर रेगुलर अपडेट्स नाउ व्हाट इज आवर मोटिव टू deal with this particular inorganic portion first we should know what are the essentialities of a lab and then we are going to deal with different reactions now it is not possible now for you to go to the lab and perform the experiments but you should always know the basics that is most important thing in our day to day chemistry life and when you will visit the lab the two essentialities which will be important is your lab coat and the lab copy lab coat will protect you from all the harmful things and lab copy will help you to perform in examination now what should we know that is the most important thing that is what should be know now the first thing is that how to adjust our bunsen burner so this one is very important while visiting a lab every experiment requires the usage of fire so what is control the bunsen burner is very important and to know this you can watch any of the videos present in youtube many videos are being present about this topic so you can see that that is essential criteria for knowing the inorganic lab or the organic lab right next purpose is how to heat a solution in a test tube or beaker over the bunsen burner this is also available many videos are available but the main part is that the test tube should always be tilted away from us towards the shelf or towards the wall so that there is no spurting out of the solution while heating and in beaker it is normal you have to keep a wire gauge and then you have to keep the beaker and heat it the last one which we should know for now all is that how to transfer a solution from one container to another container with minimum wastage or without wastage so this particular topic this particular way i will show you you have to completely transfer this liquid from the test tube into the speaker so what is the method for this we require a glass rod right so we will place the glass rod here like this and then pour the liquid so here is our glass rod so we will slowly pour the liquid through the glass rod so here complete transfer of liquid occurs with minimum wastage so this is important now see in the portion 3 i have written that how to analyze the inorganic cations and anions so this part will be discussed throughout in this particular series and related viva voce question answer is important now since there is no practical so there is always a chance that viva voce will be asked and no practical help will be given to you right so i will discuss along with the writing part that is how to write a file how to deal with the different reactions also the question answers and as i will proceed in each video if you have any doubts or any questions in your mind you can just post it into the comment box i will just discuss it in the next video but if the next video is published and you post it afterwards then it is difficult for me to just answer the question so just as the video is published watch it and if you have doubt just tell me in the comment box and write down all the notes together in a copy now the last thing which is important is that book the book required for this is vogel's qualitative inorganic analysis this book's pdf is available in internet you can just download it and read it okay now we will deal with first criteria first thing for this that is dry test tube heating as you will go into the lab first of all you will be given few samples which are known to you and you have to do the dry test tube heating a clean dry test tube was taken and to it the sample was introduced in such a way that it did not adhere to the walls of the test tube then it was heated over the bunsen burner so this portion that is the first part and this portion from the sample to observation when you are writing in a practical file you should always write in the ruled page 
and the reactions which are present in the left hand side should always be written in the white page. This is the method of writing a lab copy. Now this first part that is dry test tube heating. What is this? We are heating the sample in absence of water or any kind of solvent like HCl, H2SO4 or NH4OH dry. This dry water is important. Second point you have to keep in mind is that nothing should adhere to the walls of the test tube. Otherwise there will be partial reaction. Suppose if something is adhered into the walls of the test tube and you are heating. So the down portion reaction will occur but the ones which are adhered to the test tube will not react. So there will be a partial reaction. So you will not see correct result which you need to see to detect the sample. This is very important. Now first sample of our observation is NH4Cl ammonium chloride. This sample is white in color. When you just heat the sample in the mouth of the test tube where there is less heating in the upper cooler parts you will observe a white sublimate that is a vapor like formation white colored. What is this? This is due to the formation of ammonia plus HCl. We know that when there is a ammonia solution given and if we just dip a glass rod into the HCl and put it over the ammonia test tube then there will be white fumes observed. Similarly here this ammonia and HCl breaks up and gives us the white sublimate. Now the next part is that NH4NO3 or NH4NO2. These both samples are colorless and test tube becomes empty when heated and water droplets appear in the cooler parts of the test tube that is upper parts of the test tube. Why it occurs? If you see the reaction NH4NO3 breaks down to give NO2 plus water. This water formed gives the water droplets in the cooler parts of the test tube. Next sample is that NH4 whole 2 Cr2O7 okay and this particular sample is orange sample and it turns into green color. Now when it turns into green color in the below of the test tube you will observe sparks like the crackers. Little little sparks will be observed and the water droplets will be formed at the cooler parts of the test tube. Now if you see it will break down on being heated to a green colored Cr2O3 and nitrogen gas will be released along with four water molecules. Now if you see here then this is a NH4Cl. This is NH4NO3 and this is NH4 whole 2 Cr2O7. So this is written wrong. You have to just correct it. This one is NH4 whole 2 Cr2O7. So this is the orange colored sample. But see here when you see this one and this one you will not be able to distinguish between them. But as you perform dry test tube heating you will be easily distinguishing them. Right. Now we will see others. If nickel carbonate is taken, it is green in color, we will see that the green sample will turn black. This black color is due to NiO which is black in color. Now next part is copper sulfate dot 5 H2O. This is intense blue in color. So how it looks? This is the color and this is the color of nickel carbonate. So this is the intense blue color of copper sulfate dot 5 H2O. Now if you see upon little heating that is mild heating the intense blue color goes away and a faint blue color is seen. Okay. Why it occurs? Because the four water molecules are being lost to give copper sulfate dot H2O. This gives a faint blue color. Water droplet forms on the upper parts of the test tube. Why? Because four molecules of water is being lost. Next part is that on strong heating then sample turns white. Why white? Because another water molecule leaves the solution. Then copper sulfate left. Okay, so only copper sulfate is left which is white in color. Now this white substance on further strong heating turns to black. And why this black formation occurs? Due to copper oxide. So these are the most probable viva questions. What are the reactions? What are the formations? Now if someone asks that when copper sulfate is heated mildly, what coloration observed? Or strongly heated, what coloration observed? So this continues. Each and every line has a question. And teacher offers you 
different questions while viva so you have to keep in mind while reading and writing what you are writing and how you are representing it and this copper sulfate if you observe that there is difference that is at first step there is loss of four water and in the second step there is loss of one water why this is so this implies that the five water present in copper sulfate are not equivalent okay if you see this diagram then four water molecules which are lost in first step forms a coordinate bonding only coordinate bonding just donates the lone pair and another one that is another water which we have seen that is lost in the second step is actually bonded to the sulfate with a hydrogen bonding okay this is a hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding makes and breaks at high temperature okay because this hydrogen bonding is strong and ultimately we get only cuso4 okay this is the reason for this particular reaction to occur now if you observe this one this is copper sulfate dot 5h2 and this is copper sulfate dot h2 okay now we will see the last example that is zinc oxide in this page zinc oxide is generally white in color but when heated it turns yellow and cooling further forms it to become white and what is the reason this particular reason is discussed in details in the solid state part 8 video where we have dealt with different defects you can watch it then you can answer every aspects of question of zinc oxide for this particular way but still here i will discuss in short for details you can watch that i will give the link in the description box as well as i button present above this video now see the zinc oxide is an example of non stoichiometric metal excess defect in zinc oxide zn2+ occupies the interstitial sites and electrons are trapped in the interstitial sites for neutralization so there is zn2+ plus, plus electrons on heating it loses oxygen that is zinc oxide loses oxygen reversibly at high temperature in the oxygen deficient zno free electrons that keeps compound electrically neutral are less tightly bound and may be promoted by absorption of photon in the violet region so since it is absorbed in violet region so one will see a complementary color to the violet that is namely yellow color clear now we will see this is the zinc oxide present here that is this one is zinc oxide and if it is being heated then here the yellow color formation occurs now the last three samples to be precise there is six samples but we will deal it together so first here is kno3 it is a white sample so white sample is taken and when heated it remains white but when a glowing splinter suppose glowing splinter means that uh, something which is lighted like suppose if you take a little matchstick and you burn it and when you held it over the mouth of the test tube the flame will be bursted out that is more fire will be observed why this is so because there is a evolution of oxygen next sample is as2o3 or we can take sb2o3 now both samples are white in color and both will show white sublimate on the upper parts of the test tube when it is cool and sample slowly disappears and if this white sublimate is moistened with dilute hcl and h2s gas is passed over it then we can observe that with this particular white sublimate turns yellow for as2o3 and orange for sb2o3 now what do we mean by moistened with dilute hcl we will dip our glass rod in our dilute hcl and then put it just above the test tube then the sublimate will be moistened by dilute hcl then we will just pass h2s gas over it and the white sublimate's color changes now what is the reason for the change of color if you see the reason for the change of color is formation of as2s3 which is yellow in color and another is formation of asb2s3 which is orange in color now if you carefully see here here it is written that orange color will be formed but when sample is itself asb2s3 then you will see that the sample color is black in color okay because there are some impurity or something else but it is always black in color so the next sample is as2s3 and asb2s3 as2s3 is yellow in color and asb2s3 you will see black in color 
yellow sublimate formed on the upper cooler parts of the test tube for ACE to ACE3 and for SB to ACE3 you will observe orange sublimate formed on upper cooler parts of the test tube. Clear? Now we will see these samples. This is KNO3, this is AS2O3 and this is ASB2O3 and if no namings are given you will never identify them. So for that you will require chemicals or dry test tube heating just to distinguish them. This is ASB2S3 and this is AS2S3. Now remember what we have seen. What are the conclusions? We can see that AS2O3 and SB2O3 gives us white sublimate. And also another one which is this one. NH4Cl also gives us white sublimate. Right. So what we can conclude that from the white sublimate we cannot distinguish which sample is which. We require some more steps. So that steps will be discussed in the next video. Okay. Now in the next video we will also discuss dry test tube heating of the samples of HGCl2, HGI2, HGS, HGO, PBNO3 whole 2, PB304 and CUNO3 whole 2. So this much for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share and comment.